Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for checking out my video. Today we're, we're going to be doing an epoxy flake coating on this old garage floor. We do a lot of epoxy flake coatings and being from Maine, most of the garage floors we do have some type of damage to them like this one. This one's got some spalled areas and right now I'm just, I'm just mixing up my patch material and I'm going to fill that spalled area in. Let it harden up and then we're going to grind it nice and smooth and we're going to make it disappear. So when we when we attack a garage floor like this, you know, we always grind them first like Darren and Luca doing in the background. This one actually had a clear concrete coating on it too we had to get off before we put this epoxy coating on. So them guys are grinding off that coating and they're, you know, they're prepping the concrete at the same time. <clears throat> what I'm doing is... I'm mixing up the repair material we use. We have a, a two or three different types of re repair material we use. Uh, today I'm using the one here and I, I talk about this and I teach how to do this in a course I have down in the description below. So if you guys really want to do this, you want to learn how to do epoxy coatings, you want to even do your own garage floor, I would highly recommend taking that course from me because I cover all the specifics, all the details from A to Z in the course. So you can do this yourself. I go over all the products I use, the coatings we use, how to prep it, how to put the base coat down, broadcasting the flake into it, and then putting on the top coat. And we're going to show you here just what we do. And every, every floor is a little bit different. I mean, the basics are all the same, but some floors are worse than others. Some floors we have to do hardly any repair if they're just a year or two old, but... I'd say this one you're going to see here today is pretty common. Those cuts in there, those saw cuts, we, we honor those. We don't fill those in on garage floors. Those cuts were there for, put there for a reason to help control cracking. And the garage floor, the concrete still could be expanding and contracting a little bit. So we just leave them. And if the customer wants them filled in, we fill them in with a flexible caulking material to keep sand and dirt from getting in them. But all in all, you know, those those joints don't really cause a problem for anything. This one's actually got a center drain in it. You can see the drain there. So it kind of slowly, it slightly slopes to that drain. And it had a couple garage door openings too on different ends. So that was a little bit more unique in this. Most, most of them only have garage doors on one end. We use a very fast setting uh, base coat. It's called, a, it's a polyaspartic and it's a colored one. Today we got gray in it. And the flake we're using has uh, has three or four colors. It's got some gray, some white, some blues. So it's going to go with the base coat really well. And then what we'll end up doing is we'll we'll broadcast we'll we'll roll this base coat on, broadcast the flake into it, let it dry, and then we'll scrape it, clean it, and put the, all, the top coat on all in one day. So really, you know, if it's a 65 to 70 degree day. These people will really only be without their garage for 24 to 48 hours. If it's cooler than that, today we're wearing sweatshirts. It's a little bit cooler than that. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the 50s. So we, we recommend staying off it for about three days when in these cooler temperatures. But the products we use, we can use them all the way down to about freezing, and they still cure up pretty good. So that's why we use them. And we like getting most of these projects done in a day, too. We don't like having to wait around for cure times on the coatings and then come back the next day to have to do the last coating. So if we can, we like getting everything done in a day and, and just help speed everything up. A little bit better for the customer that way, too. So Luke's spreading out the base coat. I'm just going around the base of that post. We're going we're gonna to flake up that post just a little bit. And then I'm going to stop broadcasting flake here, as you'll see in a second. This concrete floor was probably about 20 years old. Um, it didn't have a ton of repair other than right in front of the door openings. There was a couple little spots here and there we had to fill in. But all in all, it wasn't in too bad a shape. Didn't have any moisture issues. So this base coat we were putting down has a little bit of a moisture blocker built into it as well as a primer so it's the primer the moisture blocker and the base coat all in one uh, it's a really good product that's in the course if you want to learn how to you know if you want to figure out what that is and 
you can check that out. But Luke's finishing putting that on. We have, you know, on a day like today in the 50s, I've probably got about 20 minutes or so before I got to go back and start broadcasting flake. If it was warmer, if it was in the 70s or 80s, I'd, I'd only give it about 10 minutes. As you can see I'm back there now just broadcasting the flake on that first batch. We mix up the base coat in small batches so we'll do about 200 square feet at a time we call that a kit so Darren's the mixer he'll mix up about enough to do 200 square feet we'll get that rolled out then he'll mix a new kit we'll get that rolled out and a bucket of flake a five gallon bucket of flake will will do just about that 200 square feet you know and I'm broadcasting it what we call a full broadcast so we don't like to just sprinkle them on. We like a full broadcast. It it gives the floor a little more durability. It it just I think it gives it a lot better look in the long run, and it definitely comes out more even than if you're trying to sprinkle them on. There's no like the the method I use to put the flake on is basically just grab a handful, throw it up in the air, and let it spread out in the air and drop into the into the base coat and then if I if I see a, a spot you know if I see the flake starting to soak in and it looks like a little bit of a wet spot through the flake I'll just broadcast more right onto it this this makes it pretty easy to do with three guys especially if you got just one guy that does the mixing you definitely don't want to make, mess that up it's a two-part polyaspartic so you got to make sure your your two parts are mixed correctly mixed for the right amount of time and then you get it down and get it rolled out which is what the second guy Luke is doing and then the third guy if, if you can have three people is great because they can just go back and broadcast a flake and make sure that's all down really really good you can see we're working our way right up to the driveway we even do the the little bit of the part that's outside the doors with a polyaspartic you can do the outside part too with an epoxy you don't generally do the outside because epoxies tend to yellow in the sun with uv but these polyaspartics we use are uv resistant so they don't tend to they don't tend to yellow at all in the sun we didn't do the concrete floor here someone else did it boy they put a lot of saw cuts in it didn't they <laughs> So again, if you guys want to check out the course, it's down in the description. On a laptop, it says show more down below the video. You click on that show more, it brings up all my links. And then if you're on a cell phone, there's a little down arrow to the right. Just click on that little down arrow at the bottom of the video and it brings up all the, all the links to everything I got down there. We're going to put the top coat on. I didn't get top coat on this floor. It actually got kind of dark. It gets dark pretty easy. So, uh, it gets dark pretty early this time of year. So the video I got of the top coat on this garage, I didn't really care for it. But I have another garage where we use the exact same flake, just about the exact same size, that you'll get to see us just putting on the top coat. So that's about it for the flake right there. Now we'll let that dry. It takes about an hour, hour and a half for that to dry, and then we scrape it, clean it, and then we come right back mix up the top coat so here we are after we've got it all cleaned up and ready to go the top coat just goes on clear and that goes on at about 130 square feet a gallon we like to put the top coat on a little bit thicker but it's it's still the same polyaspartic just with no color and that's that's this stuff's really durable it's really scratch resistant chemical resistant um, and it holds up really really well under under tires so we don't have any trouble with this stuff peeling off at all, especially the way we prep it by grinding. We never acid etch anything. We never get the concrete wet before we do a coating like this. That's really not good for it. The best way to prep something like this is just to grind it like we did, either by hand or renting a walk behind grinder. But, uh, you know, if you're going to do something like this, don't acid etch it. Don't wash it. Don't rinse it out. Just get rent a grinder or hire somebody to, to grind it if you don't know how and you can't. And then clean it that way, prep it that way. 
So basically the same method. Darren Darren does the mixing. Luke's doing the edges. And then I'm just doing the rolling. I'm getting it spread out, getting it back rolled. And that's, you know, the method we use. Two guys really could do this. Two guys, One guy could do all the rolling if he needed to. And, you know, one guy kind of doing the, the mixing and the edges. It just turns out that all three of us could be here today. It just moves it along a little bit faster. So check out the rest of the video, guys. Again, if you want to learn how to do this, I got a DIY, a do-it-yourself course down in the description. You can check that out. Um, goes into much more detail than these videos on YouTube does. And, I mean, you don't want to mess this up. You don't want to get it wrong. You want to make sure you do all the steps right. So I break down all the steps, go right through it for you. you got any questions, you can always email me and ask me a question about it. But that's how we do this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.